Hello friends, welcome to our next tutorial of CSS. Today we are going to discuss you how many types of CSS are there, what are the properties of CSS, what are the selectors of CSS. So guys, to get updates of my channel, please subscribe my channel Ashwani Bhatia on YouTube. Okay, so if you are not aware of my channel, you can search on the YouTube, go to the YouTube and search my name. My name is Ashwani Bhatia. Okay, and subscribe my channel. This is my channel ashwanibhatia.com slash user slash ashwani creations. This is my channel. Please subscribe it to get our updates of everything related to the web. So now, what I am going to do, I am going to start about the CSS. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. It is used to design or it is used to style the web pages. So, if I want to define the CSS, if I want to define the CSS, we have to first define what are the types of CSS. So there are three types of CSS. First is known as internal CSS. Second is known as external CSS. And third is known as inline CSS. These are the types of CSS. Internal CSS works for a particular page. External CSS works for multiple pages and inline CSS works for particular tag. So in external CSS and internal CSS we have one thing that is known as selectors. So there are three kinds of selectors. First is known as class, tag and ID. What is tag? Tag is used to customize the behavior of a tag. Supposed to be, we have lots of paragraphs in our web page. If I want to style all the paragraphs by a background color red, so I can define directly target the P tag and define the P and target it. So that whatever the tag, whatever the paragraph will come in the future that contains a background color red. Carefully listen, tag is used to customize the behavior of a tag. If I have customized the behavior of a tag as paragraph background color blue, so whatever the paragraph that are coming in the future always comes with the background color blue. Now we are talking about class. Class is defined by dot and can be used multiple times on a page and is used to style wherever we want, wherever we want. But if you talk about the ID, ID is also uh, used to uh, style the tag uh, wherever we want but id is always defined by hash and it can be used once in a page same name of id you cannot use more than one times so if i want to define anything any style that called multiple times we will use class but if i want to define any style that i want to call in one i have to use id okay so let's start with the uh, class tag and ID. Okay. So guys, what I'm doing right now, I'm going to be clicking on HTML and just clicking this page and uh, creating a one new folder that is related to CSS. Then what I will do, I'm going to be create an index page now. So if I want to do, I'm starting with internal CSS. So I will also let you know what are the differences between the class tag and ID? So, this is the head part of the page. CSS always defines in the head part of the page. Okay, by using a style tag. Now, if I want to define anything in HTML in the CSS, I will always use inside the style. So, what I will do? I have lots of paragraphs in my web page. I will copy some content from somewhere. Let's see, I am copying from wikipedia.org. I will copy. I will paste. So, 
what I'm doing, I'm pasting multiple paragraphs and I'm also putting some heading here. Then again putting, then again putting some heading, then again pasting. So that's what I've done. I have created my HTML page. You can see that contains some paragraphs, some heading. Now I want to style it. So what I will do, I will go to the style sheet. What is the tag? Tag is P. So now whatever I want to give to the paragraph, I will put inside this curly bracket. Then I will put background color red. The properties of CSS and HTML differ together. In HTML we use the BG color for putting the paragraph. But in HTML we use, oh sorry, in CSS we use background. Now you can see what happened. I will refresh this page. You can see all the paragraph becomes background red because it changes the behavior of a tag. If I want to put any property again, I have to put semicolon, then the color, then put a style, means color, whatever you want to put. I want to put red. In red, I want to put white. You can see right now. So there are lots of properties. Properties I will discuss you. But uh, for now, I am just distinguishing and telling you what is the difference between all of them. So this is known as what? Uh, tag. So if I want to target the H2, I can target the H2 as well. I want to put the background color to the H2. So background color will be created in the H2. Okay. Now, if I want to put the background color to the page, I will do the body. You can see the gray background is coming. So, guys, this is known as what? This is known as tag. Now, I'll save as this page and just give it the page name as class. So, what I have done, I have just created a class that is known as ABC, and I told you the class is defined by dot. Okay? And class name doesn't contain the spaces in their names. Class always starts with the alphabet, and the class is always if you want it will be alphanumeric but not be numeric alpha means we cannot say 1a but we say a1 no problem so i have created a class abc i am creating another class xyz so now you can see it will not apply anything anywhere because in class we need to call it nothing will happen now because we need to call a class so if I want to call a class, I can put class in the class name. If I want to put this class here also, I will put the class name. You can refresh this page, you can see it will apply it in those paragraphs where I want to go, where I have called. So now, if you want to call in this paragraph, you can also call XYZ. If you are called in a heading, it will be called wherever you want. It is not, uh, you can I use only with a paragraph wherever you want in html we have a problem we cannot give this tag there we cannot give this tag there but here you can do wherever whatever you like wherever you like you can call it got it guys so this is known as what a class now we are discussing about id what is id id is defined by hash it is defined by hash but You can see it IVC cannot be called more than one times. Why? Because ID is a unique identifier. Same name of ID we cannot call more than one times. But I am telling you one thing that is very important to you. Okay. Uh, like I can uh, call this ID more than one times. You can see what happened. I am calling it. It will work in the browser. Okay. But what is the problem? The problem is that if I will check this uh, page with W3C, W3C is a company who holds the HTML. W3C stands for World Wide Web Consortium. So if I check this page with W3C, it will give a error. Why? Because it will say 
ID is a unique identifier. We cannot call the same one of ID more than one times. It's a unique identifier. Let's give you an example. Suppose to be if you have an ID card. What I will do? I will take your ID card and paste my photo and change my name. If I will show this ID card to anywhere, it will work, no problem. But the problem is that once it will be checked by the government, then it will give a issue. Why? Because the ID that contains your name is fixed with it. It is not a ID of my name. Okay. So keep in mind one thing: ID works in the browser, same name of ID, but cannot be called more than one time. If we check this one by double click, then it will give a error. Now, if I will say X Y Z, no problem. So by uh, telling you each and everything in the CSS. I will suggest you uh, to go with all the things whatever I have done. Okay, so supposed to be if you are uh, creating some websites, if you are putting some content there, keep in your mind all of the things. <laughs> what are the things you have to keep in your mind? If you are going to put some styles in lots of containers, you can put class. You can use class, but if you are putting what? If you are putting the styles in one container. Use what? Use ID. Okay. So this is what our internal CSS. Now we are going ahead with the external CSS. Okay. So what is external CSS? Whatever we have done right now, that is a part of one page. But if I want to give this style to multiple pages, then what I will do? I have to create a new file that is known as Style or CSS. Okay. Now, whatever the styles I have defined there, I will copy it. Okay. If I have defined the class as well, I can also copy the class. No problem. <coughs> Sorry. You can see, I have a ABC name of ID and ABC X Y Z is up. ID as well as the class. Oh, so. I have uh, removed the content from this. So what I will do? I will paste it there and save as this place so that I can get sent to this file. So now I say x dot html. So this is the way uh, that we have created a page. Now what we are doing? We are attaching the external CSS with this page. If you want to attach the external CSS with your page, what you have to do? You have to type link href. Then put the file name, then put rdl, rdl, then style sheet, then type x less CSS. This is the way that we can uh, link the HTML CSS file with your HTML page. Whatever the page where you want this uh, style to be applied, just put this line so that the CSS will be called wherever you want to call it. See this page. This is the other class. These are the IDs that I have called. Okay, so this is the way that we can attach the internal CSS, external CSS in our web page. So the next last last topic of the class is what inline CSS. Okay, in inline CSS, what we do actually we don't need to create a class. We don't need to create a tag. Okay, we have to put wherever we want the style. What we do, we need to put a style, and you can put whatever the properties that you want. Okay, you want what? Background column red. You want text. So color is equal to white. You can see it will work. So inline CSS is used in email. Email means the advertisement that are coming on your websites, or the some information that are coming on your Gmail or Yahoo as a with complete design layout. That is known as emailer. And emailer always use inline CSS, okay? Because external CSS and internal CSS can't work in the emailers. And email and inline CSS also used for overwriting. We will discuss about the overwriting in the future. So that's what I am telling you based in basics. Inline CSS is used for overwriting. 
okay so uh, that's i have explained you about the css internal external and inline selectors of css inline external and internal we have done it. so in the next tutorial i will explain you about the css properties okay so if you like our tutorial please subscribe our channel that is known as ashwani bhatia and you can also uh, go to our facebook page that is known as facebook.com slash developers blog group and in this page you can like us so that you can get updates of each and everything related to the web related to the jobs related to the html related to the php lots of things related to the web updates of web so thanks for watching us subscribe our channel ashwani thank you